Hi, I'm Riley. And I am Paul. And, and we, we are, are RPJF. RPJF. Today we're going to learn about many different topics. First we're going to Frankie on a presentation for Dr. Seuss. Hi, my name is Frankie and today you'll be learning about Dr. Seuss. He's a really popular author and illustrator who's written over 60 books. In his books he has created interesting characters. Here are some of the characters he made. The Grinch, Lorax, Thing 1 and Thing 2, The Onesler, The Who's, Sam I Am, and Horton, Yertle the Turtle, and many more. I like to read a lot of his books. Some of my favorites are Green Eggs and Ham, The Lorax, The Grinch Stole Christmas, and Horton, Here's a Who. My favorite one is Redfish, Two Fish, Redfish, Blue Fish. Dr. Seuss's books are creative and clever. When he writes his books, he incorporates a lot of repetition of words and phrases and uses his rhyming words. He even makes up his own rhyming words. In his book, Oh, the Things You Can Think, he rhymes stop with slop. The rhyming makes his books easy to read for children. The, for example, in the book, Oh, the Places You'll Go, Dr. Seuss wrote, and you'll succeed, yes you will, 98 and 3 fourths percent guaranteed. Many of his books are short, but has longer books too. Dr. Seuss isn't actually his name, and he is an, a natural doctor. His name is Theodore Seuss Giselle. He also was born in Springfield, Massachusetts on March 2nd, 1904. He was 87 years old when he died. His last book was published before he died. The last book he wrote was Oh, the Places You'll Go. Everyone liked his books. They were made into movies. Here are some of the movies he made. The Lorax, Horton Hears a Who, The Cat in the Hat, and The Grinch. They made a lot of Dr. Seuss movies. He really worked hard planning and writing all of his books. His first book he made was rejected 27 times. Dr. Seuss, they published, and, and Dr. Seuss books were started to be popular books. He ended up selling 650 million books that were great for children. Because of this, he was rewarded a special prize. It was the Pulitzer Prize. It was really hard to get. Here are some of the things Dr. Seuss used to write his books. You want to have a short book, not boring, different reading levels, lessons, travel, and influence. Those are some of the things he used to write his books. Wow, that was so interesting. I never knew he wrote over 60 books. Now to Jimmy to learn about Jeff Kinney. Hi, I'm Jimmy. Today I'm going to tell you about Jeff Kinney. Jeff Kenny was born on February 19, 1971. He is 47 years old. He was born in Fort Washington, Maryland. During his writing process, Jeff uses childhood memories to help him come up with a storyline. Then he gathers 350 jokes to write a story. He uses the Wimpy Kid font while writing. When he's done, he draws on a tablet connected to his computer. Then the drawing shows up on his compute pooper, and he is able to print out his book ready for publication. Jeff wanted to become a cartoonist. He started with the newspaper. He drew a character named Igdoof, but Igdoof was rejected. So then Jeff came to the idea for Dire Wimpy Kid. He started to come up with the idea in 1989 or 98 and got it published in 2007. Jeff has written many books like Dire Wimpy Kid books. Jeff also made the Pop Tropica game which is an online role play game for kids ages 6 to 15. I chose Jeff because he writes the Diary of Wimpy Kid books. They are my favorite books. I like them because they're funny. Jeff's advice is to take time writing and find honest criticism then get it published. I use this advice to write my own stories but I have yet to get any published. Maybe one day. Thank you for tuning in back to you in the studio. That is interesting that it takes 350 jokes to write one book. Now it's Riley to learn about 9-11. Hi, my name is Riley. Today we'll be talking about 9-11. To help explain this horrible event, I wrote a book titled 9-11. The book is about a boy who is near the towers as they come down. He watches the first tower fall and then the second tower. 
As he's hiding from the explosion, he remembers his friend and firefighter are stuck in the building. He knows there's nothing he can do. My personal favorite part is when the towers come down and he has to run and hide in a nearby store. He watches the second tower come down. That is my favorite part because a very important and crucial part in the story. Before writing my paper, I had to do some research. I wanted to research 9-11 because it seemed interesting and I thought it would be a good topic for me to research. Another reason is I did not know much about 9-11. I wanted to know more. 9-11 is very interesting and if you ever get the chance to learn about it, I st strongly suggest you take the time to learn more information about this horrible event. Now back to you, Paul. Wow, I did not know that so many details went into this tragic event. Yeah, there's a lot of things that make up this big and scary event. Now to Paul, where he's talking about the Boston Tea Party. Hello, my name is Paul. Today I will be talking about my book, The Party Disaster. It is based off the Boston Tea Party. My book starts off with two friends that are hanging out and go for a walk. They hear loud noises from the dock and the boys go to investigate. When they reach the dock, they hear a bunch of colonists see a bunch of colonists wearing masks. Then the boys see some other colonists throwing tea. They will see British soldiers trying to arrest the colonists. Then Bob whispers to Joe that he sees Paul Revere. The boys rush over to him and ask, his, ask what is going on. He says that he says they didn't want to pay the tea tax anymore. While is Joe talking to Paul, Paul Revere, the, Bob gets captured. If you want to find out what happens to Bob, you'll have to re read my book. I chose to write about the Boston Tea Party because I've never really known much about the, the event and I just heard the name of it and didn't know what happened. Overall, I had a lot of fun writing my book. I think it will come out great. Thank you for tuning in. Back to, Riley, back to you, Riley, in the studio. I did not know they wore masks to disguise themselves. Yeah, they were pretty smart. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you, you for, for tuning, tuning in to RPJF. RPJF. Hello, my name is Olivia. And my name is Alexia. And you're, and you're watching, watching 7.5 7 News. Today, I mean, I'm very excited to hear about all these historical events. Same here, especially since they worked so hard on them. Yes, they have worked hard. In fact, now is Alexia talking about the Twin Towers. Hello, my name is Alexia, and I'm going to be talking about a story that I wrote called The Twin Towers. My story is about a guy named Bob who works in the Twin Towers. He hears a loud bang and doesn't know what's going on. He sees people freaking out and all he, all he does is try to escape. As he tries to escape, he hears another bang but doesn't care. All he cares about is escaping the building. As he makes it out of the building, he takes a second to realize what has happened while he's doing that. While he's doing that, his attention was caught to a loud noise. The top two floors of the towers collapsed as he heard the horror in people's voices. If you want to find out what happens next, you will have to read my story, The Twin Towers. The reason I chose this topic for my story is because I didn't really know that much about it and I wanted to learn more about it. I was surprised, that, surprised to find out there was another plane crash that, that crashed into the building. This gave me more ideas. For writing my, for, writing my story was interesting, so that's all on my story. To know more, you can maybe read my story. Back to you in the studio. Thank you, Alexia. That was very interesting. Wow, there was a really big plane crash. That was a big plane crash. It made it very interesting. Yes, it was quite amusing. Maybe we can have some more favorites in other books that are coming up. Absolutely, Olivia. And look what we have here, Paige talking about her favorite author. Hello, my name is Paige, and today we will be, we will be learning about Dr. Seuss. Dr. Seuss is a famous author that many of you have probably heard of. He was born on March 2, 1904, and lived to be 87 years old. Dr. Seuss's real name was Theodore Seuss Jizzle. He, he was an author who wrote 47 children's books. Dr. Seuss is a goofy author that loves to make his books rhyme. Dr. Seuss had a mother named Henrietta and a father named Theodore. He also had two sisters named Henrietta and Marina, but no brothers. Dr. Seuss had a lot of books, over 47. Some of his most famous books are Green Eggs and Ham, the Lorax, Cat and Hat, One Fish, Two Fish, Red Fish, Blue Fish, and my favorite, How the Grinch Stole Christmas. Dr. Seuss' advice is to make sure that your stories are short but still fun, not boring, and it needs to have rhyme and rhythm. The reason why I chose Dr. Seuss as my author is because I like how sometimes he makes up some words, but you can still tell what they mean. 
and I love his pictures because they are colorful and fun. Back to you, Alexia. Thank you, Paige. I learned a lot of new facts about Dr. Seuss. My favorite part was when she talked about all his siblings. Mine was when Paige talked about some of the books out of all his 47 books. Wow, that's a lot of books. Now let's listen to Ariana's book about Paris bombing. Bonjour, my name is Ariana and I will be telling you about November 13, 2015, or the Paris bombings. The characters in my story are 12-year-old Isabel, 15-year-old Noel, and their father, President Francis Hollande. They go to their favorite place on a Friday night and eat some croissants. Later, they see people running down the street in panic. They take a walk to calm people down, and Francis goes back into the coffee shop because Noel forgot her phone. But that doesn't matter anymore. Another explosion went off right in the center of the coffee shop. The girls are confused whether they should go in and help others pull people out of the burning buildings or if they should call for help. They decide it would be better to do both, so they call 911 and help other adults pull people out of the burning buildings. I wrote this story not only because it was an assignment, but it was a fun and very educational project. I wanted to write a book that would be entertaining for a little kid and an older kid. I believe that goal was achieved. Although my story isn't completely finished yet, I chose this event because I love Paris and wanted to know more about this terrible day. Another reason I chose this topic is that the Paris bombings happened about three years ago, and I didn't find out until about five months ago. It was a long process, but definitely worth it. First, I had to study an author and how they write their books. Then I had to pick my historical event, and finally, I came up with my book. There's another step, but I'm not there yet. It's to illustrate pictures for each page. I'm excited to see my final product. Thank you for tuning in. Back to you, Olivia. Thank you, Ariana, for all that information. That was very amazing. I thought it was funny when she went back to get her phone. I know, right? And I thought it was fantastic when the girls helped pull people out of the fire. Definitely. Such young heroes in their story. It would be very scary to see someone in a fire. Now let's listen to Olivia's story on the 15th to 17th to Paris. My name is Olivia, and I'll be talking about my book, The 15th to to Paris. My book is about a girl named Olivia who lives in Paris. She has brown hair, brown eyes, pretty average size fair grade, and she's 11 years old. <sighs> Olivia and her dad go to one of his meetings with the people he works with. They decide to meet at Bert's Burp and Pizza just down the road. Her dad works in a group called Help the People, or the HTP. <laughs> there, uh, so he was meeting up with these guys that worked there. Olivia later met these three guys. Their names were Aunt Spencer Stone, Alex Arcados, and Anthony Sadler. She told them she really enjoyed ab learning about what they work for and said, thank you for your service. They said they would return the favor, and Olivia and her dad left a little while later. Olivia and her dad raced home, and she won. Olivia begged her mom to stay up later because she had a huge report due tomorrow. Olivia's mom eventually let her stay up later. The next morning, she wakes up feeling a cold draft coming down the window. She suddenly hears a low voice mugging someone. She then runs to her dad and mom's room with her dad still sleeping. She wakes him up, telling her him what she saw. He said that it was just her crazy imagination running wild again. She then decided to get over and ask her mom if she could go over to her friend Alexia's house. She finally agreed to go to let her go on the subway alone. She left the apartment and walked down the subway, seeing rundown buildings and some pedestrians on the sidewalk. She finally managed to get on the subway okay. She sat next to a man that looked suspiciously familiar. Just then, she realized that was a guy who was mugging someone else. Suddenly, she, feeling nervous, she walked to the back of the subway. Suddenly, she, she felt a sigh of relief as she saw the guys from the pizza shop. That's all I'm going to tell you for now. If you want to hear the end of my story, you'll have to read my book. You might want to hear why I chose this event. I chose this event because it demonstrates how you can save so many lives just by doing the right thing. The sto this story can relate to so many human lives. The thing I'm trying to say is to be kind to one another. You don't know when they'll be gone. Back to you in the studio. Thank you, Olivia. My favorite part was when she saw the guy from the pizza shop. Me too. Well, well folks, that's, that's all for today on 7.5 News. Hello, and welcome to Cups, Chicken Unicorn Potatoes. 
I am James. And I am Danielle. Today, our crew will talk about the books that they made. We all worked hard on books and authors about historical events. Megan worked on Erin Hunter. Yes, she will share about it now. Thanks, James. Hi, I'm Megan, here to share my favorite author with you. Her name is Erin Hunter. You may have heard about the books she, from her she wrote. Some of those include the Warrior Cat series. My favorite book by Erin Hunter is A Vision of Shadows, Warriors, The Apprentice's Quest. I like this book because there's a lot of mysteries. There's a lot of cats, which are my favorite animal. I also love the adventure in the books. It is very interesting. Did you know that Erin Hunter isn't really a person? It is actually seven different people. Those people include Victoria Holmes, Kate Carey, Cherith Baldry, Gillian Phillip, and Bali Israelis, Toop Sutherland, and Rosie Best. All these people work together to write the series. They each help each other to write the books and come up with different ideas. I think they do a great job working together. Back to you in the studio. Wow, that was great. I truly learned a lot. Who knew a story could be so interesting? Now we have Danielle talking about the monkey in space. Hello, my name is Danielle. Today we are going to be learning about a book I wrote. My book is about a monkey and her new friend going into space. The people from NASA took both Abel and Baker from their homes to use them to test their space rocket. In the middle of my book, they meet each other just before getting launched into space. When they are in space, their rocket breaks down because the wires broke and they had to find a way to fix them. They finally find a way to fix the spaceship and go back to Earth safely and get reunited to their families. My favorite part of this book is when their rocket breaks down in space. I like this part because it is funny and exciting at the same time. You are always wondering what will happen next. It is also very interesting to read. I chose this topic because I thought it would be a good top choice for me to write about. Also because it seemed very interesting to me. I hope you enjoyed learning about my book and that you will consider reading it. Thank you for tuning in. Back to you in the studio. That told me a lot about your book. It sounds funny. I might have to read it. Thanks. Now we have you, James, to read about Pompeii's eruption, a book you made. Thank you, Danielle. I'm going to talk about my book, Pompeii's Eruption, and the writing process I went through to create this story. The book is about a family escaping a volcano named Mount Vesuvius that erupted. There is one problem. Their door was blocked by the chairs from the earthquake the volcano produced. Lucky for them, they make it out. Before I started my writing my story, I had to research. It was a big deal. I researched people who lived during the Pompeii eruption, what Pompeii used to look like, and what it is like to be stuck in a volcano eruption. Writing the actual book was very long with several rounds of editing. Overall, it helped me understand about writing in a different way. The characters all have a little of my personality in them. The main character, the little boy, has my fear in the fact that he follows and does the most he can to protect himself first. Leonardo has my silliness, quirks, and of course, jokes. The credit for art goes to my mom, who has been to Pompeii. She gave me pictures and tips for drawing because she is a pro at being a great artist. Overall, writing this story was fun. Thank you for tuning in. Back to you, Danielle. That was great. You really worked hard on that. Yes, I did. Thanks for that. That's all for now, guys. Danielle and James signing off. off. My name is Riley. And I'm Caitlin. Welcome, Welcome to, to SCAR 25 News. News. I'm so excited to learn about Paris, the Paris bombing, Dr. Seuss, 9-11, and the Titanic. Me too. First up, we'll be learning about Dr. Seuss. Over to you, Sophia. Hi, my name is Sophia. Today, we're going to be talking about Dr. Seuss. Dr. Seuss was born in 1904 and died at the age of 87 in 1991. His real name isn't really Dr. Seuss. It's actually Theodore Seuss Giesel. He had two sisters, Marnie and Henrietta. His mom's name is also Henrietta, and his dad's name is also Theodore, too. Dr. Seuss had two wives, Helen and Audrey. He has written at least 47 books. 
My favorite books written by him are Green Eggs and Ham, Horton Hears a Who, and How the Grinch Stole Christmas. Did you know that the books Horton Hears a Who and How the Grinch Stole Christmas were made into movies? They are really great movies to watch with you and your family. I chose Dr. Seuss as my author because I like his style of writing and how all of his books rhyme. In my opinion, I think Dr. Seuss is a great author who is very creative. Back to you, Riley and Caitlin. Whoa, I didn't know Dr. Seuss had two sisters. He also wrote so many types of children's books. Now over to Ava to learn about Rhoda Dahl. Hello, I'm Ava and today we'll be learning about Rhoda Dahl, who is a famous author who wrote very interesting books. On a daily basis, he would walk out to his old red barn, sit in his comfy green chair, check out paper and a pencil, and write. Dahl would write up for eight hours a day. Some books that he wrote were Matilda, the BFG, and James and the Giant Peach. In my opinion, the BFG is the best. It's about a little girl who lived in an orphanage and wanted to prove to the other girls that the boogeyman was not real. Once she thought she had stayed up long enough to wait for him, she went to bed. While she was under the comfy blankets, she saw a large hand, bigger than her, coming toward her and picked the little girl up. At the time, the girl was scared, so she peeked out of a little hole between the big fingers of a giant to see where she had been taken. It was a very stealthy giant. He called himself the BFG. After a little while, the big friendly giant brought the little girl to his home, Giant Country. In Giant Country, humongous hungry giants live there. Their only food is when the BFG brings back children and they escape. The BFG himself is very different from other giants. He does not eat children. The girl was terrified, but the big friendly giant and the girl went on adventures catching dreams. This book is very interesting, but if you want to find out about the rest, then you have to read the book. I really like this book because you describe the setting and the way the characters look. Even though there's illustrations, I can picture it in my head before I look at the drawing. That's all for today. Thanks for watching. Back to you, Caitlin and Riley. He wrote so many books, including the BFG, James Giant Peach, and Matilda. Those are some great books. Now over to Amelie to learn about 9-11. Hello, my name is Amelie. Today, we are going to be talking all about my book, The Scariest Day of My Life. The historical event I wait on which I based my book is on September 11, 2001. 9-11 was the day terrorists hijacked four planes in mid-flight in the United States. Two of the planes hit the World Trade Center. Another one of the planes hit the Pentagon, the headquarters of the U.S. military. The final plane did not reach its destination. It crashed in a field in Shanksville, Pennsylvania. People were convinced that the terrorists were headed straight for the White House with the fourth plane. All this was changed by a group of people whom today we call heroes. The passengers on the fourth plane had been informed by family members of the horrible events that had happened earlier that day. The news allowed the passengers to know that their plane was also being used by terrorists to crash into another U.S. building. Since they knew they were going to die, they became heroes by taking over the plane to save thousands of lives at their next target. Now that you know the historical event on which I based my book, you can see how it is involved with my story. In my story, The Scariest Day of My Life, my main character is named Harold. Harold is going on a plane for the first time ever and his parents are supporting him every step of the way. It was a beautiful morning just like any other day. All was going well right up until Harold and his parents realized that Flight 11 on American Airlines, their flight was being taken over by terrorists. The terrorists changed the course of the plane and were headed straight toward the World Trade Center. His parents tried to comfort him, but he had never been more frightened in his whole life. Then the plane crashes. If you want to figure out what happens next, you will have to read my book. It is definitely a struggle to write the scariest day of my life, but a very fun experience. I started out with getting all the facts of 9-11. Next, I folded a piece of paper into three sections. One section had a summary and bullet points of what was in the beginning of my story. Another had a summary of the middle, and the last section had a summary of the end of my book. Then, I will actually start writing out my book on a storyboard to figure out what was going to be on each page. I use sensory details so that people can really picture the setting of each page. Then I will type up my story and edit. Finally, I will bind my book into a story with my own illustrations. Thanks for listening. Back to you in the studio. 9-11 must have been a very sad and scary day. I wouldn't have wanted to be there. Now over to Riley to learn about Dr. Seuss. Hello, my name is Riley. Today you will be learning about Dr. Seuss. Dr. Seuss was born in Springfield, Massachusetts on March 2, 1904. He died in 
La Jolla, California on September 29, 1991. He died at age, the age of 87. He had two sisters. Their names were Henrita and Marnie. His parents' names are Henrita and Theodore. Do, did you know Dr. Seuss, Dr. Seuss's real name is Theodore Diesel Seuss? He got married on November 29, 1927 to Helen Palmer. Then on June 21, 1968, he married Audrey Diesel. Dr. Seuss wrote at least 47 books. Some of his favorite, some of my favorite books he wrote were Green Eggs and Ham, One Fish, Two Fish, Red Fish, Blue Fish, The Grinch Stole Christmas, and Oh, The Places You'll Go. I chose this author because I own most of his books and he wrote very good books for children who are learning to read. Ever since I was a little girl, I love Dr. Seuss. Since then, he has been my favorite author. Did you enjoy researching about Dr. Seuss, Riley? Very much. Now over to Caitlin to learn about the Titanic. Hello, my name is Caitlin, and today I'll be giving you a summary about my story, Never Forgotten. My story is about two main characters named William and Kate. William and Kate had met from crashing into each other when he was distracted by the squeaky staircase. Later on that exciting day, the ship had already set sail from Southampton, UK, to New York City. When the night was getting late, most people on the ship were getting ready to eat in the dining room while others were finishing up the tours when they had gone. Five days had passed. It was April 15th. Everyone was still enjoying their voyage so far. As the night rolls around, everyone on the ship, Kate and William, are walking on the main deck. Then they both had fell on the floor by the ship hitting an iceberg. If you would like to find out the ending, then you would have to read Never Forgotten. I had chosen the Titanic for my story because I had wanted to learn more interesting facts about how it had sank. My research helped me understand more of the process of how the ship had sank. This helped me write my story. Writing my story was fun, but it took a lot of work because you need to know step by step of how the sinking of the Titanic went. Thank you for tuning in. Bring it back to you, Riley. I wouldn't have not wanted to be on that ship at that time. Me either. Thank, Thank you, you for tuning, tuning in to SCAR 25 News. Welcome to Brain. Today we are going to talk about two World War II books, Mike Lupica and the Paris Bombing. We have all been working very hard on our, writing our historical fiction books. First we have Cameron talking about Mike Lupica. My name is Cameron. Today I will be telling you about my favorite author, Mike Lupica. He is a sport writer who writes young adult books about players. I chose this author because I have read most of his books. His his books are entertaining and I can relate to the characters because I play sports too. My favorite book is Underdogs, Man, Million Dollar Throw, Last Man Out, and Fast Break. My favorite book is The Underdog, Underdogs. It's about a kid named Will. He tries to win a championship for his team in his town. He is the fastest kid on the team and in the town. The town is poor because Forbes, a shoe company that went out of business, so they went poor. His dad broke his leg when he was a kid from playing football. A playing football. A huge defensive lineman hit him really hard and messed up his knee. In the end of, in, in the end, they beat the rich and best team, so they won the championship. This is my favorite book because the team is poor and did not win a game the season before, and they won the championship the next season. Well, that was very interesting. I did not know that much about Mike Lupica. Yeah, I really like the part about when he talked about his favorite book. And now we have Jake talking about his World War II historical fiction book. Hi, my name is Jake, and today I'll be learning about my book that I wrote. The book is about Tyler and his family. They were doing work, and then they saw planes dropping bob bombs above their town. They ran and found a boat. They decided to get in it and ride away. They arrive in an island. The war is happening there on the island too. They look around and no one is there. They walk into a building. There are soldiers that were captured by Nazis. If you want to find out what happened to the soldiers, you should read my book. My favorite part about writing my book was the research. It was interesting because I was able to learn about World War II. I learned that there were a lot of people died in 
what was happening in the war. It is very sad. Back to you in the studio. That was great. It was very informational. Now we have Rhea with their Paris bombing book. Hello, my name is Rhea. Today I will be talking about a book I wrote called Alex and Leo, A Bad Day in Paris. This book is about two kids named Alex and Leo. They are going to Stade de France, a famous French stadium in Paris. While sitting down, they realize, hear a massive explosion. Finally, they realize their parents pushing them from out underneath a falling balcony. Alexander tries to save them, but didn't make it in time. Their parents were gone. They seek help from President Francis Hollanday. He helps them by contacting with their uncle Ben and aunt Alora, who live in New Hampshire. The two kids go and live with them. At least now they are safe and happy. Of course they miss Paris, but just like anyone would, they miss their mom and dad. I chose to write about the Paris bombing because I want to go to Paris when I am older. It's my dream. Back to you in the studio. Wow, that was very sad, but it was also interesting how the president could contact people from all over the world for help. Now we have Tyler talking about his World War II historical fiction book. Hi, my name is Tyler. Today I will be telling you about my book called History is Happening. This book is about a kid named Jake who lives in Poland in 1939. In the beginning of World War II, Jake tries to hide and protect his family from not being taken away by the Nazi soldiers. In the middle of the book, he gets taken away and separated from his family. In the end of the book, he escapes with other stolen people. If you want to learn more about what happens, then you will have to read my book. I chose to write about World War II because I love to learn about history. I watched a show called Hunting Hitler. It's about a theory that Hitler escaped and didn't die in World War II. They are trying to find evidence because some people say he did and some people say he didn't escape from the war. This show t just talks about Hitler and not about the actual war, so I wanted to learn more. I used all of this research to help me write my book. If you like to learn about history and you like books, this is a good combina combination of, the, of that together. Back to you in the studio. What a brave main character. That book was very interesting. Thank you, Rhea. That's all for today. That's a wrap.